Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And this week we want to get everything ready to fit some glass back into the Alferrari. guys welcome back and um, a bunch of you last week if you're watching will have seen I did my rear seat delete of the car I'm very happy with how it turned out it looks really good um, I've you know had a bit of a hit with the, uh, the heat gun and uh, um, it's looking fantastic I'm very happy uh, overall the uh, comments seem to be good if you missed it I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing it definitely helps the channel out so moving forward uh, like I mentioned last week, we have to get the uh, glass back into this car to take it to this event. It has to be outside, uh, so it needs to be ready to go outside. And uh, that means that uh, we need to start looking at fitting all the rest of the chrome trim and glass. So I'm going to start digging into that and see what needs to go in where and uh, let's start fitting it. All right, I've got a whole bunch of different chrome bits and pieces sitting around here that I need to work out where they all go. Um, I've got some idea for some of it, but not all of it. Uh, so first things first is these, uh, these long trims I've got here actually go uh, inside and clip in uh, sort of my headliner and all that sort of stuff all around the edge. Uh, some of it's got some overspray on it. They're a little bit beaten up and stuff like that. So I'm going to go through and tidy them up. They are, I don't believe you can actually get them new. You've got to just find them and reuse them. And these are actually in not bad shape. They're just, uh, they're just, yeah, just a bit dirty and ugly. And uh, yeah, there's a few little bits that I'm going to have to uh, attack with the, the, the hammer, just lightly uh, try and get some of these wrinkles out. So let's get on the bench now and see if we can sort of tidy them up a little bit. So starting off, all of these pieces have been taped up and hidden away. So I'm starting by cleaning off all the tape marks and just giving them a quick tidy up with some thinners. Then going over them now with a small hand polisher, just to get into sort of the detailed areas, the hard to get to little bits and pieces. And then onto the bench buff for the bits that I can reach. But I probably need to find a better location for my buff because I can't really get into it very easily in this corner of the workshop. And you see here sort of a few dents on some of these pieces. So I'm just using a dolly and uh, just lightly tapping them out with a hammer. All right, so I've uh, been spending several hours doing a bunch of polishing and uh, and as I'm working my way through all of the stainless pieces, you can sort of see I've got a bunch of bits that have got little bends and dings and stuff in them. So um, I'm going through and uh, just using um, a bodywork dolly in a vise and any flat surfaces or curb surfaces or whatever surfaces I can find to actually, you know, make the right shape. Uh, I've been using that and uh, and just going through and just, just very lightly tapping with the hammer and then going over and um, uh, then polishing them again. And, uh, and it's actually coming out really good. So a lot of these little sort of bent things, I can just work my way through and just tidy up the, uh, um, the bends and get them so that they're pretty reasonable. I mean, they're, they're not new, you can't get new, but uh, I'm quite happy with the, with the look. They're, they're, they're looking nice and shiny and I'll show you through after I'm finished, but uh, we'll just work our way through and keep getting rid of all these dents. All right, that was a lot of time, but I've gone through and cleaned up all of the stainless trim. Um, there's a lot less dents in it. It's not perfect, but a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of dents like this sort of area here are actually not seen. So let's start installing them in the car. Okay, and uh, a bunch of you are going to be very happy because I am now, finally, going to be removing all of these little clips all the way around the edge of the, uh, the window frames because this chrome trim I have here, which was the, uh, the really big, long, wonky one, is actually from the inside of the car all the way along this lip. So uh, let's remove these clips and install the trim. All 
right, so I've got my upper trim in, so that's the internal trim. There's one that goes down uh, the, so the inside of the door, and there's also the sill plates down at the bottom of the door. I've got them all in, and I'm sort of starting my work my way through, and there's, the more I'm looking at it, the more that there is actually like an order of events that need to go in to get everything together. So, for example, the door rubbers, which I've had in and out a bunch of times, obviously in the construction process, don't go in until much later because I think from what I've seen, I need to actually get the rear window in before I can put the, uh, the frames for the door rubbers in and put the door rubbers in. Um, and uh, before I can put the window in, I have to put in the, uh, the, the rear window rubber and, these, uh, and all the trims. So uh, looking at these rear window rubbers, they're actually held in by the trims. So uh, I'm gonna go through now and start sort of clipping this stuff together and trying to work out exactly how everything's supposed to go together and make sure I do it the right way, I hope. So you can see here with a lot of this stuff, it's going backwards and forwards and giving it multiple goes and getting it right. I'm using a dead blow hammer to sort of lightly tap it all into place because it all sort of clips in over the drip rail on the side of the car and uh, then screws in, in a couple of select places. All right, so I've got the uh, basic frame in all the way around and uh, this sort of center panel in and these lower panels with the rubber in for the quarter glass. And I realized, like I mentioned before, there is an order to things and I've got the order wrong. So this bottom piece here can't go in until the, uh, the glass goes in because the glass actually sits up higher than this little piece down the bottom, so higher and lower. So uh, I need to actually remove this uh, lower piece again and get the window ready to go in. But getting the window ready to go in requires a little bit more effort. All right, so the next thing I want to get ready is um, I need to fix these bell cranks. Now, you might have seen me make these uh, in the past. These are the bell cranks that I made up to actually open up the rear quarter glasses with those, uh, those electric uh, motors I put in there. And uh, I, I built these up, and they're okay, but it's a bit of a sort of uh, handmade, not amazing shape. And now that I have the really cool world-class plasma cutter and uh, plasma table, I can cut out something a little bit nicer. And uh, I spent a little bit of time on CAD and uh, designed up a little bit of a better shape. So uh, we're gonna cut them out now and get them ready to go into the car. This plasma table is a total game changer. Just being able to design and build my parts uh, from home is amazing. And just the quality of stuff, just cleaning the slag off the back and uh, drilling out the holes nicely and then tapping them to take the fittings I'm using. Finally, I just give them a nice coat of the hard wearing enamel to finish them off. All right, so I've painted up the bell cranks and got all that sort of stuff ready to go. So that is sort of uh, drying in the background. So the next thing I need to play around with is the glass itself. Now this glass to start with is filthy. Um, the, uh, the stainless needs a bit of a polish. But one of the things that I found on Harry My 911 uh, is that even with the electric aircon that I've got in there that works really good, the issue is, is that there's so much heat that gets into the cabin through the glass. The heat just blasts in and I get sunburnt through the window. I'm always having to wear, in, in the heat of summer, I have to wear long sleeves and cover up in, um, uh, in sunscreen. And uh, I'm even sort of hiding my hands down, sort of down the side, trying to hold the steering wheel in the, in the shade somewhere, depending on the direction I'm traveling. And one of the things that I'm desperate to do to that car and I'm gonna do before I even start on Harry is tint the windows. Now, I am not a huge fan of the dark tinted windows on the classic cars. I just, I wanna be able to see the interior, see, see what I've done. Basically, I talked to guys at Black Armor Window Tinting about some clear window tint. Now, it's not clear, there is no such thing as completely clear uh, UV tint, but this is pretty close. This stuff is, um, 
70% uh, tint. So basically it lets 70% of the light through, but this tint also uh, reflects 99.9% .9 of UV rays and it keeps 55% of the heat out of the cabin, something like that. So, so basically it, it's going to make the cabin much nicer and more comfortable in these hot Australian summers, even though at the moment it is freezing cold because it's the middle of winter. Um, but uh, it went, once we get to summer, I want to make sure I've got the tint in it. So that's what I'm going to do beforehand. So uh, this tint, I think, is going to, to uh, do the job nicely. So I've never put tint on a car before, but I know the first thing I need to do is get this stuff nice and clean. So let's go through it now, clean up, uh, polish up everything I need to polish up, get it all as clean as I can, and then we can start playing around with putting some window tint on the uh, our Ferrari. All right, so I've never put window tint on before, but I've got a fair bit here to make mistakes. Uh, Black Armour sent me a fair bit. Um, you can probably see me through that tint there that it's not clear. Uh, it's, it's got a very slight tint to it, but it's pretty close to clear. Um, and uh, if it can block the UV, that is what I'm looking for. So um, from what I gather, I need to start on the outside of the window and I make the pattern on the outside and then you actually stick it from the, uh, the other side. Uh, I've worked out that uh, as you roll it out, the, uh, I, I just peeled off a little corner just to make sure I knew which bit was sticky bit, was the sticky bit and which bit is the uh, sort of throwaway bit. I've got a bottle of, um, this, is, this is actually the slip solution that I used for the, um, uh, the PPF, but uh, I think they, they say you can use sort of dishwashing liquid or whatever, but uh, just in a spray bottle. So uh, I'm gonna spray everything down and this is not a how-to. As I said, I've never done this before, so um, I am potentially going to mess the first time up, but let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I've got the windows out of the car. It's going to be way easier tinting them first than trying to do it once it's in the car, particularly with the roll cage. So here I've trimmed the shape of the film to the glass that I need, and then start cleaning everything up and getting it ready to apply it. I wet it down with my soapy water and sort of struggle to try and uh, peel the backing off the film. A technique I found in a video was to actually bite the film and use your teeth to separate the two layers. And now just sort of trying to lay it in place, get it roughly there and uh, then squeegee it out nice and flat and it actually seems to come out not too bad. Alright, well that went really well. Um... It's relatively straightforward because this has got to be probably the easiest possible thing to tint. There's zero curve in it because uh, these, this glass is completely flat on the sides of the Alpha, which makes things much easier. I didn't have to shrink it or do any of that stuff. So uh, uh, a good place to practice on. And also, like I mentioned, it's out of the car. Uh, makes life much easier. So uh, I think I'm going to go through now and start doing... Uh, the other bits of glass and see if I can get sort of everything that I can tint. Let's do the tint. Let's do it while I'm on a roll. So this time I actually tried making the piece much bigger than the window, seeing as I'm not constrained by having to fit it around uh, the factory rubber or anything. It was easier to fit a larger piece on and then trim it after the fact. Alright, so all of the flat glass is done. All of the sides, so the, um, the, not all of the flat glass. I still have the quarter glasses. I just remembered that. But uh, I can tackle that later. Um, but the, the sides of the car is done. Uh, now I need to move on to the back window. This is going to be a little bit more complicated because this is curved. I'm not sure. It looks like it might only have one curve, so it may not need shrinking of the uh, uh, of the tint. I'm, I'm looking at it now. I'm thinking it's probably only one. It looks very, very flat, so it probably be just one solid sheet. But uh, it's still going to be slightly more complicated than the other glass. So um, first things first is we have to clean all this up and see if we can get some tint on this rear window. And yeah, it's been this filthy thing sitting around for ages. It would really be nice to see if you can actually see through it because it's so dirty. So I'm going over these windows with several steps of cleaning. First with just glass cleaner and then uh, 
getting rid of all of the residue and stuff like that of tape and things like that has been on it over the years and then I'm going around with a razor blade over the entire surface to really get rid of all the excess bits and pieces and then I've got a glass polish that I use and then I go back and use the window cleaner again and then I start with the film. Alright, so uh, looking at it now, it doesn't look like the rear window is one single curve. It is a compound curve going in all directions because I can see by the way that the film's laying down that there's wrinkles on either side. And uh, I watched a YouTube video on this, <laughs> like we all learn. And uh, yeah, so I've got the film on the outside of the glass. Uh, and what I'm going to go through now is with the heat gun, I'm going to slowly try and shrink this corner and shrink the corners as I go around to try and sort of uh, get it to mould the shape of the window before I stick it on the underside. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes and I'll just, uh, I'll just gradually work my way through it and see if it, I don't wreck the, uh, the film. You can see here I really don't know what I'm doing and I'm folding my tail a lot, which is not helping my case. Okay, so shrinking the tint over the outside of the screen is actually really time consuming. Like uh, you get all these sort of fingers coming through. Uh, I don't know how well they're coming up on camera, but uh, these fingers just sort of keep coming back all the time. And uh, I've sort of done quite well, sort of shrunk most of the bottom edge, got most of the way around. The, and uh, then I got a little bit overzealous over here and I've shrunk it too much in the middle and I've wrecked this film. So. Yeah, quite time consuming and I've just spent uh, half an hour, 40 minutes on this piece to only wreck it and have to start again. So yeah, it's a learning curve. All right, well, I failed twice and uh, I went back last night and did a bunch of research to try and work out what's going on. I came back and it is very cold this morning as you can see and uh, I'm going to have another go. Now the issue that I think I was having is that I was trying to do this dry. I'm sure there's window tinters watching this who were, who were screaming at the, yeah, uh, at the TV saying how I was doing it wrong. Now after the research I've worked out that I I think I know what I was doing wrong and basically because I was trying to do it wet and uh, after the uh, a bunch more research it looks like dry is the way to do it. Um, I'll show you through a few of the mistakes I made now. I'm sure there were plenty of window tinters screaming at me <laughs> why I was doing it wrong. Uh, let's see if we can do it again and not waste any more film. So this technique I've blowing some baby powder over the window and then using a damp cloth to wipe an H in it and basically trying to stick down the tint either end and in the middle so that I have all the wrinkles from top to bottom and that's the way you should shrink them is keep the end straight and shrink in the middle and I'm doing this dry so this is called the dry method and uh, I'm going through and shrinking it here and uh, it's shrinking much much faster but uh, I uh, yeah, I'm still struggling. All right, well, that one is another fail. Um, it's, it's close, but I've got too many creases in it, and, uh, and I've actually wrecked it. And uh, I've talked to the guys at Black Armour. They got me onto one of their um, specials. Apparently, this is an extremely hard window to tint because of the, uh, the curves. Apparently, modern cars are much easier than these. Uh, so probably jumping in the deep end, trying to uh, learn how to... Uh, tint for the first time on this so I'm gonna have one more go and if that fails then I might just take it in and uh, and get somebody to just take the, the, the rear glass in and get somebody to uh, who knows what they're doing to tint it so let's go again so I'm gonna give this one last go and uh, try the same method again and in theory, I'm sort of doing things the right way, but I don't really know what I'm doing, and uh, it shows. I'm calling it. I've, uh, this is the fourth go. 
I can probably salvage it from here, but I've had enough for the time being. I've just been going for the last... It's basically half a day I've been working just on this back window only. And uh, I've just got too much to do to spend so much time on this when um, next to my work, my day job, there is a, uh, a window tinting shop. So I'm just going to take this down and get them to do the tint, I think. Um, I, just, I just can't afford to spend any more time struggling uh, with this uh, with this window so um, I think we need to move on and uh, let's start installing those side windows into the car That is so much work. So there is such an order to get everything right in this interior. You've got to have the interior chrome bits in, in a certain order first, and then the exterior ones and getting it all in together. And I did actually end up chipping the uh, the paint just underneath here, which I'm gonna to have to airbrush in later. Uh, it's not a huge deal, but it's just annoying things that uh, it's just so time consuming. I've spent, just to get this one side in, two hours now trying to mess around trying to get this in it's just so fiddly and juggling and tight with the rubber and all the rest of it but it's there now let's do the other side at least i know what i'm doing this time sort of so i can hopefully do it slightly quicker Alright, so the windows are in on both sides. There's still a, um, there's a tiny little trim that goes in the corner of the window that I still have to put, uh, to get, uh, but classic out for carry it, I'll be able to order one of them. Can't believe how much work it was just to fit two windows and polish a bunch of stainless. But uh, the stainless trim is in, it looks really good. Um, my hats are off to the, um, the designers who came up with all this chrome trim uh, in the first place because it's all, it's extremely annoying to put it all together but it all does go together quite nicely and everything overlaps quite nicely and, and tidies everything up and finishes everything off but you have to get everything in the exact right order and uh, yeah, I've uh, I finally worked it out, got the, uh, the, the two rear windows in and that's four days of work to do what I've done this week is uh, stuff up a whole bunch of window tinting, do a bunch of polishing and, uh, and, and bolt these in. <sighs> but I am completely out of time. So again, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 2004, Ferrari revealed its successor to the 360 with the F430. This car still used the same basic aluminium chassis as the 360, as well as the same roof lines, doors and glass. Interestingly, the facelifted bodywork of the F430 had the same drag coefficient as the 360, but had much greater downforce. The big change in the F430 was the engine. All previous Ferrari V8 had evolved from the Dino race car engines of the 1950s. This new V8 was used as a cross-plane crank by Maserati and in the flat-plane crank form in the F430, making 490 horsepower from its 4.3 litres. The F430 was also the last mid-engine Ferrari to be offered as a gated manual. Total numbers are not known, but it's estimated that only 10% of the F430's built were built as manuals. So that means out of the 14,000 F430s built, only about 1,400 of them are actually manuals. This makes them more valuable because they're rarer than the F1 cars. 
All right, well, that was a lot of time spent uh, just putting in two windows and giving up on <laughs> doing the window tint. I really struggled, but uh, all of the... Um, uh, all of the window tinting guys we talked to, talk to said that that was very hard to do. Doing it out of the car is much harder than in the car because it, it moves around and, yeah, I... But why do things the easy way? That's exactly. what you've kind of... Well, I is, thought it might be easier out of the car. This is Jeff's Apparently journey. I was wrong. So, and I gave it a go and I'll give it more of a go when I have a go uh, on Harry. I'm going to try and do Harry myself. So I haven't given up completely, but I just... I. I don't have the time to waste at the moment. I really want to get this car done, but I wanted to get it done well. So uh, yeah, that's what it is. And, and the window's already at the window tinter getting done, so I should have that back hopefully uh, Next week? in a week or so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it might be the following week, but yeah. Okay. How long do they need? Well, they need a couple of days, but this is the weekend, and I'm not going to be able to go back until after. So how long would it actually take them to put the tinting on, in theory? Couple of hours. A couple of oh, even so, that's still quite a big job, and that's professional. Yeah. So yeah. The professional said the yeah, guy absolutely. I talked to said it's gonna it's at least an hour of yeah, wow. uh, work to I get. I kind of just right. thought you could sort of lay, lay it down. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> and you can't. More <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, hope you enjoy. We're getting down to crunch time. I think there's only five or six weeks left uh, to go, so. Uh, we've got to get this down on its wheels and all the glass in and all the rest of it. So hopefully you join us for that next week. Uh, like, subscribe, Patreon if you want to help Jeff out and um, on his journey. Yep. Oh. And uh, yeah, see you soon. We'll see you on the next one. There you go. The aluminium chassis is the 360. But this car still uses the same basic aluminium chassis as the 360, but no, 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 as well as. Interestingly, the face work had evolved from the Dino race cars of the 1950s. Race engines. Damn it. And the F430 making 490 horsepower from its 4.3 litres. Oh, that's confusing. This new V8 was used in a cross-plane crank form by Maserati and is a flat-plane crank by... Oh my god, I was right!